This week we're talking about how to make the most of your time prior to launch while you're waiting for your sample, how to build a great email list, and how to reach the most amount of people before you launch. Welcome back to the Inner China Show. I'm here in Shenzhen, China, my home for the past year and a half. And I'm actually standing on my balcony of the apartment. You can check out the Ping An Tower there. Uh, but yeah, this week I had the chance to interview uh, Antoine Mercarian of Kello, which is a connected alarm clock uh, that helps you go to sleep and wake up energized. And I'm excited to share this interview with you. It's the first one we did in person, and it was down at the Brink headquarters in Hong Kong. That's uh, where Nick is a partner. It's a IoT accelerator, Internet of Things accelerator. So we got to talk with Antoine about how to be prepared before launch. Uh, you know, with with your email list, building that out. How to get the word out about your project, and how to build interest before you even press go. And it was a very uh, fruitful discussion and I think you'll get a lot out of it. So let's do it. So Antoine, you've got a great product and you're in the middle of getting a sample made. So you know, you've got some time before you're launching. So how do you maximize that time and uh, start getting the buzz going now? Yeah, so it's, uh, it's you're absolutely right. Uh, Building a hardware product takes time. Uh, being in Hong Kong makes it a lot faster uh, and, and close to Shenzhen, but still it takes, I would say, for every iteration, you need like three, four weeks before mm -hmm. you're getting the actual product in your hands. Mm -hmm. So you better use that time. Right. And I would say it's better to build a community as soon as possible, as early as it is in the process. Mm -hmm. Because uh, when you build a community first, you have people that are interested in your product that can leverage later, and then you can also uh, get feedbacks from them. Mm -hmm. So uh, what we do uh, to build the, the community uh, is um, is um, Facebook ads. Okay. Uh, we also reach out personally to a lot of people that are influencers in this space. Okay. Uh, we also uh, look at uh, what competitors are doing and we're replicating what mm -hmm. they're doing. So mm -hmm. we look at their campaigns, mm -hmm. uh, we look at where they advertise, mm -hmm. uh, how they advertise, and so we understand uh, how it can work with us with our positioning, mm -hmm. which is obviously different than, than, than the others. I would say that building the community mm -hmm. as, as early as possible in your product development is, mm -hmm. uh, is a very good use of that time. Okay. Um, yeah. Now you say you're using ads and yeah. are, you're probably driving those ads to a landing page. Absolutely. So what is kind of the essentials for a landing page? Like you build a landing page and it's not one of those, if you build it, they will come. You obviously are driving traffic with the ads. Yep. Yep. You know, how are you getting the most emails possible? So uh, we do a lot of testing, a lot of uh, different testing, A-B testing. Uh, so we use a tool called uh, uh, named uh, Espresso, uh, okay. if you know that, and it allows to to build the A/B testing campaigns uh, using Facebook ads uh, very effectively. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are indeed several steps uh, before conversion. Mm -hmm. So first is a display of the ad, then click on the ad, mm -hmm. and then uh, arrival on a web page, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, User have to leave their email on the web page, and after that they have to confirm the email. Right. So it's two, two steps, double uh, opt-in, double opt-in indeed. Mm -hmm. And so uh, every bit of the way uh, we tried and we optimized. So you have to only test one bit at a time. You can't test several Facebook ads with several version of your web page or right. your confirmation email. Otherwise, it gets too expensive mm -hmm. and it gets too complicated to analyze right. the results. So right. to do this, we basically test for like twenty dollar a day okay. on Facebook ads and we test reasonable. one thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so like let the campaign run for like I don't know three, five days mm -hmm. and then you analyze the results. I mean making a smaller budget uh, you don't get valuable results and uh, mm -hmm. a, a smaller time frame as well you don't get valuable results. So this is what this is what we do. We test different situations, twenty dollar per day on a campaign uh, for five days and then we pick the one that performs the best. Okay. And so you're uh, minimizing the variables, right. making it a lot easier to identify the winner. Yeah, and uh, it's also, I mean, 
what, what is hard and what was hard for us is understanding what we should test. Mm. So should we test? I mean, because you can basically test everything, every right. word, every color, etc. Right. So it makes so much things to test. So you have to uh, use your best judgment, and yeah. it's, it's, it's it's hard answer, but. For example, is, uh, what are some of the things that you... So we tested, uh, the, the stuff we had the most insight on is on main positioning. So what are we? Mm -hmm. So uh, are we uh, a wake-up companion? Are we uh, a, a connected alarm clock? Mm -hmm. Are we just an alarm clock? Are we uh, a, a, a connected audio speaker? Mm -hmm. And so we tried all those many different positioning mm -hmm. and we looked at which one performs the best. And for us, uh, so we're building an alarm clock, so saying that we would Build and the were an alarm clock was what performed the best. Yeah, that was not granted because alarm clock can have like a negative uh, like yeah, connotation. Connotation, mm -hmm. and, and but this is what performs the best. So we're happy that we are an alarm clock and we can be positioned as an alarm clock. So not only are you testing like what's giving you the most emails, but you're also learning your marketing messaging as you go. Absolutely, yes. So, all right, now you've got all these uh, emails that are coming in, yep. trickling in one by one or, or hundreds by hundreds, hopefully. <laughs> now, what do you do to maximize these these new followers, these new fans, yes. to get the most out of them? So, what we do, uh, it's one of the best things we've done, is that we send a personal email to each and every one that subscribed to our mm -hmm. list. We ask them two things. Uh, we ask them how they wake up today, mm -hmm. And what excites you the most about Kelo? Why they think Kelo might be better at waking them up than mm. the current solution that they use? Mm. And this is a gold mine because now we know what resonates the most to our audience. And yeah. now we know how to stack track the features. Uh, we actually made some changes in feature set based on that feedback. Wow. Yeah. So there were some features that were very complex technically and that were ranking super low. Yeah. So we decided to just remove them. And there were other features uh, that were that seemed very important to the users. And mm -hmm. so we we invested more energy and more time into fine-tuning those features a lot a little bit further. And when you get that feedback from them, they feel like they're stakeholders. Absolutely. So we have, uh, I don't know if it's because of that, uh, but I guess it is. We have a super high engagement rate. Yeah. So we send a monthly newsletter and we have like five times the industry average in terms of uh, open rate, click rate, uh, comments on the blog, etc. So, yeah. so it's like, yeah, it, 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 they feel that they're part of the yeah. product. product. And I imagine come launch time, uh, you know, the majority of those people are going to want to purchase because they were a part of changing the feature set. I, I hope yeah. so. Yeah. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, yeah. Hopefully they will see value in the product and, uh, and because it's been designed with them, they can, they can, they can see even more. Yeah, uh, interesting. Yeah, I'm sure they will. And, and uh, so engaging the community is, is super key in, in getting people excited about your product, mm -hmm. um, making them feel like um, they are a part of building it, which they were. I mean, you even changed your feature set. Mm -hmm. So that's huge. But all right, let's talk about some of the bigger guys, those, yeah. the publications, the bloggers, yeah. the media. Yeah. You know, those are historically hard to tap into. Like, what do you do? To hack into that market. So uh, this is something we are just starting, uh, but we've been for a while. We've been following what was happening in the space. So we have all those Google alerts mm -hmm. on the keywords that are interesting for us. Mm -hmm. And so, like uh, alarm clock, like mm -hmm. what's happened in the music streaming business, etc. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when we find an, an article that we like, uh, we actually flag uh, the journalist that is writing it, and mm -hmm. then we follow uh, what they're writing. Um, mm -hmm. Like we have some alerts as well on mm -hmm. the name, so mm -hmm. we can understand what they are interested in, what are the articles that they read, right? Mm -hmm. And and that makes it easier then to reach out to them and say, hey, yeah, I know, I know you you wrote on the alarm clock space, but you also wrote on that, and that was and, and make it personal. I would say uh, that resonated with me because um, mm -hmm. there's a reason. So know what they want, how they want it, uh, how they write, how they position themselves, and that makes it easier to reach out to them and to. Uh, I don't know, like create. Uh, I mean, it's not cold, cold emailing. It's right. Like, it's it's a little bit doing more research personal. ahead of time. Yeah. yeah. But it takes a massive amount of time. So yeah. you can't do that on a large scale. Yeah. Um, uh, so you have to figure out which publications really yeah. will make the biggest difference for you and your yeah. campaign. Yeah, that's it. Uh, this is it. And it also, of course, uh, it's personal opinion, right? Mm -hmm. If you like uh, what a journalist is, is, is writing, mm -hmm. if you like the, the 
style and the tone of, of uh, their articles, then even if it's like maybe not totally mm -hmm. in your, uh, but I mean, if you like it, it just uh, it yeah. makes it easier because you're excited about it. And you write right. them, and they they can probably sense that when you reach I out. Get, to yeah, them. yeah, that's it. So are you quantifying the publications you're reaching out to, saying like this one can give us about five hundred thousand views? You're not doing this. No. no. Okay. Maybe we should, but right now we're not doing this. Okay. Um, we're looking at uh, the content more and more content. Yeah. I mean, like interesting content rather than a big numbers. Yeah. Well, it stands to reason if the content is aligned, then the right customers are there to yeah to have interest it, in your product. Right. So it may, yeah, exactly, it may be not a matter of quantity, but mm -hmm. of uh, like targeting and uh, yeah, and, yeah. Okay. Really cool stuff. Um, and have you landed any any? So we're just starting. Just uh, starting. Yeah. But we are. Uh, yeah, we got yeah. We actually got some answers from from journalists. So okay, so this is nice. Very good. Yeah. And I imagine also being a part of uh, Brink and yeah. uh, having the connections here really helps to get access to some journalists and bloggers. Absolutely. So uh, Brink is a hardware startup accelerators, mm -hmm. and so uh, the Brink team and other startups at Brink mm -hmm. have started uh, creating relationship with with influencers and so um, we can obviously use that to get like introductions. Yeah. yeah. So it's helpful. All right, let's get down to you know the real tips and tricks here. I mean what's the 80-20 of the work to be doing when you're building interest pre-launch? I mean you can be doing a lot of things. Yeah. But what are the one or two things that make the most difference? Um, for us, I would say uh, reaching out personally to everyone, uh, we gain so much insight from this. Mm -hmm. So uh, this, and uh, so we are very analytical, so we look at the data. Mm -hmm. So we looked at the hardcore data, mm -hmm. and conversion rate, mm -hmm. uh, click rate, uh, click through complete, complete uh, com uh, funnel. Right. Um, right. And, and so, yeah, so that would be it, like, rely, I mean, we don't like to rely on intuition, uh, yeah. intuition, yeah. If it uh, doesn't stack up by the numbers, yeah. then it's out. Right, mm -hmm. yeah, so, uh, yeah, I would say this is what we're doing. Test, uh, iterate on the, on, the, on the product, mm -hmm. and as soon as you get valuable insight from customers, mm -hmm. try again, change it, try again, try again. Try again yeah. So try and iterate, I would say. Yeah, very good, like a, a lean model. Yeah. yeah, and uh, like I would say, invest. I mean, if you don't want to, I mean, you have to invest a little bit of money in in getting traffic, right? To be able to test things, right? So uh, glad to do that. And so as you're budgeting for you know your whole product launch, you yeah. should plan on having to pay for a little bit of traffic. Absolutely, yeah. that that is very. Key. I don't think you you need that much. You need like basically to validate something you need like twenty dollars a day five days three five days so yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean and then test the metrics and yeah. just optimize 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 exactly yeah exactly it's good yeah well thank you Antoine thanks it's been good to yeah. talk with you cool thank yeah. you all right yeah, yeah.